subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening welcome to south asia news line i'm lipakshi khurana here are the top stories you are tracking for you on Monday, the 21st of February. Campaign for Assembly polls gains momentum in India's Manipur and Uttar Pradesh states. Pakistan government faces backlash from journalists, political parties over new law to regulate social media. And Afghan's annual per capita income could fall to $350 amid economic crisis, warns Sigur report. And now for all the details, political parties on Monday intensified their election campaign ahead of the fourth phase of assembly polls in India's most populous Uttar Pradesh state and two-phased polling in northeastern Manipur state. Delhi's Chief Minister and Ahmadmi Party National Convener Arvind Kejriwal began a four-day visit to Uttar Pradesh with a rally in state capital Lucknow to drum up support for his party's candidates. Uttar Pradesh is currently ruled by Prime Minister Narendra Modi's BJP, the Bharatiya Janata Party, and the polls are being seen as a barometer for national elections due in 2024. Main opposition Congress leader Priyanka Gandhi also held a massive road show in Lucknow, followed by poll rallies, where she pointed out to a stuttering economy and lack of job creation. Meanwhile, Congress leader Rahul Gandhi addressing a public gathering in Manipur blamed the ruling BJP of divisive politics and not doing anything for the farmers. Earlier this month, Western Goa and Northern Punjab and Uttarakhand also held a single-phased polling. Counting of votes in all the five states will begin on March 10th. And several Indian states, including Western Goa and Southern Kerala, reopened schools for physical classes on Monday as authorities have begun easing down restrictions amid a decline in coronavirus infections. The active cases of COVID-19 in India dipped to 202,131 on Monday, with daily positivity rate recorded at 1.93%. Schools in several Indian states reopened for offline classes on Monday as authorities have started easing down restrictions amid a decline in coronavirus cases. Physical lessons resumed for all classes in Western Goa and Southern Kerala state, while schools reopened for standard 3rd to 8th in the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir after being shut for over two years due to the pandemic. The temperatures of the students were checked and their hands were sanitized as they arrived wearing masks. Teachers and students were elated to meet each other as they expressed there used to be several hassles during online classes. The active cases of COVID-19 in India dipped to 202,131 on Monday as it locked only 16,051 fresh infections in the last 24 hours. India had kick-started COVID-19 vaccination drive for children aged between 15 and 18 on January 3. The Health Ministry said over 70% of beneficiaries in the age group have received the first dose of COVID-19 vaccine so far. And in news from Pakistan, Pakistan's media bodies and opposition parties have rejected the amendments to the Prevention of Electronic Crimes Act, saying it is a flagrant move to undermine the freedom of speech press and defiant voices in the country. Calling the legislation a step to curb fake news, the government has increased imprisonment term against defamation from three years to five. Pakistan government's renewed effort to regulate social media through a presidential ordinance on Sunday has received widespread criticism from opposition parties, as well as the Pakistan Federal Union of Journalists and various media bodies which have termed it another blatant move to stifle the freedom of speech and dissenting voices. With the promulgation of the Prevention of Electronic Crimes Amendment Act Ordinance 2022, the government declared that imprisonment against defamation has been enhanced from three years to five. 
calling it the legislation to curb fake news, law minister Farooq Naseem said it allows anyone from the public to become a complainant against defamation of any public office holder. Opposition PPP Vice President Shehri Rehman said on Twitter this is not about regulating fake news or protecting the vulnerable from cyber predations, but quite the opposite. While PMLN Vice President Maryam Nawaz said soon the ruling PTI government itself would become a victim of these new laws. Reports suggest the move comes days after Sabir Mahmood Hashmi, a social media activist from opposition PMLN, was arrested by Federal Investigation Agency for allegedly running a malicious social media campaign against Prime Minister Imran Khan and his wife Bushra Bibi. PMLN leader Maryam Nawaz had then asked if the Prime Minister was a sacred cow whose looting and failures cannot be criticised. And moving on, the Pakistan government's recent decision to substantially hike price of petroleum products has drawn massive ire from the people of Gilgit, Baltistan. Adding to their misery, acute water shortage also hit the illegally occupied region. Residents say they are left facing hygienic water shortages despite the region hosting hundreds of glaciers. Locals in the illegally occupied region of Gilgit, Baltistan have lamented the recent fuel price hike that has come as an atom bomb amid an all-time high inflation. Pakistan government last week increased petrol prices by rupees 12 per litre, highest hike in one go. Daily commuters said the move has shaken the domestic budgets. Amid the twinkling economy, power tariffs are also expected to rise up by rupees 6.10 per unit, reports suggest. यहाँ पे ये पेट्रोल की जो मुसाफ़ जो बढ़ गई है ये तो आम पे अटंबम गिरा है हम तो इस उम्मीद पे ज़दम सा पे ये उम्मीद लगाए बैठ सही कि पेट्रोल की कीमतें कम होंगी वो। Meanwhile, residents have also raised concern over shortage of drinking water in several remote areas. Gilgit Baltistan hosts around hundreds of glaciers, yet most people rely on mostly unfiltered water, leaving them at risk of waterborne diseases. यहाँ आपको सिंह नून के तादाद में हेपेटाइटिस के मरीज मिलेंगे लोग आए रोज आए दिन जो ना हॉस्पिटलों में क्या हुआ पानी के मसले की वजह से यहाँ पे दो शफाफ चश्मे मौजूद हैं एक चश्मा वो है तकरीबन तीन से चार की उसे कि यहाँ पे पानी मौजूद है इस पानी से एक टैंकी बना के इस इलाके को पानी देने वाली बात है जिस पे कुछ हजरात ऐसे है जो जिनको हम क्या कहेंगे कि इंतजार पसंद कहेंगे या इनको क्या Locals blame the Pakistan government has repeatedly turned a blind eye to the problems faced by the people of the illegally occupied territory, making Gilgit Baltistan one of the most backward regions under Pakistan's rule. And a news from Afghanistan has been an economic crisis since the Taliban took over last August and the country's more than $9 billion central bank's assets were frozen. Amid the humanitarian and economic crisis in Afghanistan, the Special Inspector General for Afghanistan's reconstruction said that this year the annual per capita income of Afghans is estimated to decrease sharply and the country could face a further economic contraction if action is not taken. The Special Inspector General for Afghanistan's reconstruction cigar in its latest report said that this year the annual per capita income of Afghans is estimated to decrease sharply amid the humanitarian and economic crisis in the country. Afghan per capita income is estimated to have fallen from 650 US dollars in 2012 to 550 US dollars in 2020 and is expected to drop to 350 US dollars by 2022, the report said. The report quoting United Nations Development Programme UNDP and IMF's estimates said Afghanistan's economy suffered a severe contraction in 2021, up to a 20 to 30 percent drop in GDP. UNDP warned of further contractions of between 3 to 5 percent if urgent corrective action was not taken, especially with respect to the employment of women, the report said. Billions of dollars in Afghan central bank reserves, the World Bank administered trust fund and foreign financial aid were frozen to keep it out of Taliban hands after the Islamist group seized power in August last year. Since then, Afghanistan faces severe humanitarian and economic challenges. 
Meanwhile, the United Nations Children's Agency UNICEF would pay Afghan teachers a monthly stipend for at least two months. The organization said in a statement on Sunday, with salaries unpaid for months as the country is plunged into economic crisis due to sanctions on the Taliban administration. The payments of roughly 100 US dollars per month would be funded by the European Union. The international community has been grappling on how to engage with the Taliban without formally recognizing their government and has made education for girls a key demand when speaking with the group, according to diplomats. The Taliban have been vague on their plans for girls' education, with many still unable to attend secondary school in a large number of provinces. However, the group has said it is working on plans to allow girls to return to school and is opening universities this month with women attending. And amid obstructions by Nepal's main opposition, CPN-UML, and protests outside the parliament building from members of smaller factions of the Communist Party, the government on Sunday tabled the U.S.-funded infrastructure program, MCC, in parliament. Protesters clashed with police, forcing them to use tear gas and water cannons to disperse the crowd. Meanwhile, the meeting of the parliament has been rescheduled for February 24th. Nepal witnessed another tense day on Sunday after agitators protesting against the ratification of US-funded Millennium Challenge Corporation Compact Agreement clashed with the police in capital Kathmandu. Police fired tear gas and water cannon to disperse protesters opposed to the US-funded infrastructure program that was presented in the parliament for ratification on Sunday. US government aid agency MCC agreed in 2017 to provide 500 million US dollar in grants to fund a 300 kilometer or 187 mile electricity transmission line and a road improvement project in Nepal. This has been a bone of contention between the US and China. Government officials said the grant will not have to be repaid and comes with no strings, but opponents say the agreement would undermine Nepal's laws and sovereignty as lawmakers would have insufficient oversight of the board directing the infrastructure project. Despite loud protests, the Minister for Communication and Information Technology, Gyanendra Bahadur Karki, put forward the agreement in Parliament and said the projects would benefit 24 million of Nepal's 30 million population. The session witnessed obstruction by lawmakers of the main opposition party, CPN-UML, and protests by CPN Maoist Centre lawmakers. Meanwhile, the meeting of the House of Representatives have been rescheduled for February 24. The Nepal parliament has until February 28 to ratify the deal. Nepal relies heavily on foreign aid and donors coordinate development aid policy through Nepal Development Forum, whose members include donor countries and international financial organizations. And turning trash into treasure, an artist in India's indoor city has been creating eye-catching artifacts and portraits from plastic waste, discarded newspapers and other waste material. Have a look. Proving a perfect example of one man's trash is another man's treasure, artist Sunil Vyas from India's indoor city has been turning discarded waste materials into eye-catching artifacts. Sunil uses discarded newspapers, plastics, old wood, biscuits and sweet box covers to make his scrap art. He has also created impressive portraits of iconic leaders like Mahatma Gandhi, Rabindranath Tagore and also late singer Lata Mangeshkar out of the scrap material. I have always tried to do something और जिसमें मैंने पुरानी पेपर कटिंग और प्लास्टिक वेस्ट मटेरियल और लकड़ी के वेस्ट मटेरियल इस तरह से मैंने नए नए मीडियम में पेंटिंग बनाई है और साथ में एग्जिबिट की है कंसीडरिंग दैट प्लास्टिक वेस्ट इज वन ऑफ इंडियाज बिगेस्ट वेस्ट प्रॉब्लम्स अ स्टोरी लाइक दिस रिमाइंड्स द मासेस टू रीयूज प्लास्टिक वेस्ट एंड टू सेव द एनवायरनमेंट Sunil said treating oneself as a student is a key to success. He now aims to promote his scrap art across India. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
सब्सक्राइब टैग टीवी यूट्यूब चैनल एंड प्रेस द नोटिफिकेशन बटन